Hi everyone, Alex Tardy here. Wanted to give you a summary of the rainy season, winter 2023-24. It appears to be winding down as it usually does in late April. Though we've had some significant events, including flooding, lightning, uh, and snow in our mountains. Let's take a look. These are the highlights. Uh, we had a strong El Nino. That's the warmer than usual temperatures along the equator. The jet stream responded to that in the Central Pacific, especially in late December, if you recall that big swell and surf we received. The jet stream also brought some unusual lightning events. We'll talk about those. Precipitation, though, was slow to develop. Uh, it didn't really pick up until late January where it came down intensely in San Diego. Then the Pacific jet stream locked in across Southern California for February and into March. And we jumped up to almost 140% of normal along the coast. There were six atmospheric rivers. Uh, they were all weak to moderate and one was strong. The January 22nd heavy rain was actually a weak atmospheric river. Then we had some cold Pacific storms in March. Those produced heavy snowfall in the mountains mid late March and also unusual lightning. And then finally we had a storm in early April. We've seen a lot of variability with our winters uh, in even this year, there was the same thing with a slow start and then very intense significant precipitation in the middle of the winter. Okay, I'm showing you the atmospheric rivers here. Again, uh, there was six weak to moderate, only one strong February Fourth that went to our north up by Point Conception, but we saw a lot of heavy rain. If you break down the storms, uh, they're listed here. Again, uh, they were mostly weak to moderate atmospheric rivers that did bring us weather. But we had other storms, and those are listed down below, including the January 22nd, which was a weak atmospheric river, but also those storms that we had in March that were very cold and unstable, even though uh, not all of them were atmospheric rivers. Precipitation for the water year is shown on the right-hand side. You can see Southern California really stands out. We are 90 to 135% of normal, that green and blue shaded. So uh, let's take a look at one storm in particular. Uh, that was the late December. We didn't really get any rain. Uh, in fact, most areas were dry, but the wind energy associated with this jet stream was powerful in terms of developing a massive swell, and that led to big surf on our coast, 12 to 18 feet. The result was, as shown in these photos here, uh, really big surf, damaging surf, especially to the San Diego beaches. Now, we also had a significant lightning outbreak, and that was back in November. A photo taken here off of Coronado shows the power of the thunderstorms that developed that particular day. And it also was a healthy atmospheric river, as shown here. That wasn't the only lightning event we had. Take a look at this one right before Christmas. It also produced a severe thunderstorm but look at all those lightning strikes over the ocean. A couple photos that we're taking off of Carlsbad at night, often good viewing for distant lightning as shown here. Here's an image of the severe thunderstorm that occurred late in the evening before Christmas. Uh, it was powerful enough to produce 55 miles Per hour winds at the airport and it knocked over about a dozen trees, some of them large. Okay, we all know about this storm, especially in the San Diego area, a powerful jet stream similar to late December moved into Southern California, but this one moved directly into San Diego from west to east. In fact, the jet stream extended all the way across half of the globe as shown here. Tremendous amount of rain occurred, two to two and a half inches of rain in about 90 minutes 
even though this was a weak atmospheric river, the jet stream was pointed right at San Diego with devastating flooding. Flooding was 500 to 1,000 year return interval with almost three inches of rain in one day and again, almost two and a half inches in 90 minutes. Here's some flooding that was occurring along the San Diego River on that day. The most devastating flooding was in East San Diego. Choyas Creek is shown here. The water was so powerful and running so high and fast that it took down chain link fences, took down concrete, peeled off concrete from the channel and undercut the light rail as shown here. And of course, a lot of this water entered homes and even swept away cars and other large debris downstream. Then in early February, atmospheric rivers set up. We had back-to-back -back atmospheric rivers. As I mentioned earlier, one was strong and they really focused on central California all the way down to Orange County. In fact, we had some flooding in Seal Beach as shown here with tremendous rain, uh, almost two inches of rain in 60 minutes from that atmospheric river. Also in Huntington Beach on the same day, you can see the flooding that resulted in that area. More pictures out of the Seal Beach area. Okay, uh, the other thing that happened in early February after these atmospheric rivers moved through is we finally got some cold air and our first major snowstorm occurred. In fact, snowfall was as high as 97 inches in several days at Snow Valley. Now, most of our mountain communities didn't see that much, but they did see between two to four feet of snow up around 6,000 feet and above as shown here. There was even significant snow in the San Diego mountains. Let's take a look at the precipitation. Uh, the January 31st through early February precipitation was huge. We had a location in the San Gabriel mountains that had 18 inches of water as shown here. Even parts of the Inland Empire, six to seven inches of water. The seven day precipitation along the Orange County coast equally as impressive. There was places up to nine inches of rain. When you go down to San Diego County, not quite as much, but we still had a lot of areas that received between three to five inches of water with the higher amounts up around seven inches in North County. So back to back atmospheric rivers, very late January, early February resulted in all this rain. Then when we got into March, I mentioned it got colder and we continue to see snow in the mountains, locally heavy above 6,000 feet, but we saw more lightning. Uh, and we also had thunderstorms with wind gusts of 50 to 55 miles per hour in the San Diego region, even some reports of hail. Uh, these thunderstorms were moving north to south across the region. Here's a look at a lightning map showing the cloud to ground and the cloud to cloud lightning. Both of those were visible during this mid-March thunderstorm event. In fact, we saw thunderstorms on a Friday and again on a Monday during this back-to-back -back event. If you take a look um, later in the month, more cold air came in and we saw thunder snow. It's a rare occurrence that they see thunder snow in our mountains, but there was lightning that was persistent and heavy across the Mount San Jacinto area. And that area uh, received several inches of snow in that thunderstorm complex. Then finally, we had some April showers and the rainbows as the winter started to wind down. Let's take a look real quick at the climate facts here. Across Southern California, as mentioned, we were above average, quite a bit so far above average as shown here. If you look at the California precipitation as a whole, 
uh, it is above average as well, uh, but only slightly. So this t takes into account everywhere in California, the mountains, the deserts, the coast. If you look at our past years in Southern California, highly variable. Last year was very wet. This year, a little bit less than last year as shown in the numbers below on the table. Same thing for the whole state, highly variable with some very dry years recently and some very wet years like 2017 and of course last year, 2022-23. This is what it looks like on a map. Started off the year very dry, much below normal. End of the year, 80 to 140% of average in Southwest California. Now, a lot of this precipitation didn't make it all the way into the Colorado Basin and the inland deserts, but our coastal areas were heavily picked on by repeated storms, especially those atmospheric rivers I showed you earlier. Here's just a California view. Uh, up until late April, and you can see most areas are between 100 and 140 percent of average. So they're going to end of the year above normal. I did want to highlight the Big Bear Lake area. We are out of drought because of the really wet year and now the back-to-back -back wet years. And the lake is nearly full and it hasn't been like this for years in that region only about four and a half feet below its full level. At a period during the drought, it was as much as 16 to 18 feet below. Here's some precipitation numbers. Take a look at your area, your favorite climate site closest to you. Look at San Diego, 12.34 uh, inches. And I also included last year's amounts so you can compare the two. Uh, Palomar Mountain, Orange County, Riverside County, San Diego County, or even up in San Bernardino County, Big Bear Lake. You can see uh, that the water year last year was remarkable, uh, even though we were above normal this year as well. Snowpack in California, uh, that was remarkable last year. If you look at the two years, this year Mammoth is only 50% of what it received last year. Nonetheless, we're ending the year above normal, which is a great uh, achievement, especially for keeping drought out of our region and keeping water supply full. And for Southern California, we also had a lot of snowfall uh, between 100 and 200 inches above 6,500 feet. You can see Snow Valley came in with 200 inches for the year. That's a photo of San Gregorio Mountain taken on April 27th. Statewide precipitation in the Sierra Nevada. Uh, it's coming out right about average for this time of year. Of course, the water season isn't over yet. Keep that in mind. We can still get significant precipitation in the spring and even sometimes in the summer, like last year with Hillary. Okay, the weather pattern was split at the beginning of the year and that's why we started off so slow. Uh, the jet stream was going mainly to our north and south. But once it set up in late January, it was focused, intense, and also started eventually bringing in much colder air as shown in the purple here in February and especially early March. We came out of a strong El Nino. So that was evident as we went into the fall and early winter as shown here, warmer than normal ocean temperatures near the equator. That's starting to fall apart now. Uh, in March, in April, the cooling is taking over and now we're transitioning into a La Nina. So what does that mean? Um, well, let's take a look first at the forecast for this year. How did we do? We predicted above normal precipitation for most of California and milder conditions for December through February. And that's pretty much what happened. Temperatures were above normal, not by a lot, by a little bit though, across California, but precipitation was wet all up and down the coast from Northern California to Southern California, and even parts of the interior. The only region that wasn't significantly above normal was the Sierra Nevada, as shown earlier. 
but snowpack did end up slightly above normal. What's the outlook for May? Um, indications are that cooler weather will return in early May, but overall the weather pattern is signaling uh, average to slightly above average conditions in May. So as we exit April, it looks like some cooler weather will still hang around with some wet weather across the Pacific Northwest, but overall in May, we'll start to transition into average or a little bit above average. Now, if we look into the summer months, July through September, there are indications that interior areas of the Great Basin and inland California will be above average, that's warmer than normal. So potentially for some significant heat waves. These are different projections uh, for the same area. So they're not all showing the same thing, but most of them are indicating uh, warmer than average conditions for the heart of our summer. If you take a look at the monsoon, July through September, we're also seeing indications that that will be drier or less or weaker than average as shown here. Not all the weather models agree this far out, uh, but there's strong indications across the Rockies and parts of the Southwest of a below average monsoon. So warmer and drier. The official forecast for July through September is shown here. It's indicating the drier than normal monsoon potential across the Rockies and even much of the Great Basin and also warmer than average temperatures, more heat waves, especially for interior from our deserts all throughout the Great Basin, and that includes the deserts of Southern California. Now our coastal areas has the least confidence as we go deeper into the summer as shown here.